admitted this patient last night. She's a 28 year old G2P0 at 44 with pregnancy complicated. Victoria, I'd like to place a couple IVs. I'm worried that you're dehydrated and we're not quite getting enough fluids into you. There is a possibility that if this, the first thing that we do doesn't control your bleeding and stop it, that we might have to do an operation. Everyone needs to train. Physicians, nurses, surgeons are no different. Today we simulated delivering a baby with shoulder dystocia, which is when the shoulder gets stuck and we're trying to figure out another way to get the baby out. These are things that could happen on my first day of residency. It would be really scary to be thrown into that situation, having never had the chance to go through the steps. When you go into simulation, you can see that light come on. You can imagine yourself about to board an airplane. You look at your pilots. You assume they've practiced. They've done a takeoff. They've done an engine failure. They've done a water landing. Physicians, surgeons, nurses need to have the same experience too. They need to be able to train for the uh, rare event, for the critical event. It really helps to kind of transition and translate the clinical book learning that we learn in the lecture halls to actual patient care in a safe way. Simulation absolutely improves patient care from every aspect. We've seen our outcomes improve. We've seen our test scores improve. Residents learn how to interact better with their team members, interact better as a, as a team leader in patient care. They are just more familiar with certain procedures, certain skills. Having this new center, it's now really just open opportunity for more and more of that same type of education. The simulation team that really designed this really consulted many, many stakeholders. You know, what do you need? What do you need to really simulate a real patient scenario? The idea for the new Sim Center was to actually develop a simulated hospital. We pulled it off. We got a great mini hospital exclusively for teaching that looks exactly like a real hospital in every respect. This is, feels very immersive when you walk into one of the rooms back here, you actually feel like you're in a patient room up on uh, the ninth floor in Mott where labor and delivery is. You walk into a room and if no one told you there was a sim center, you would never know the difference. The new simulation center expansion is 7,500 square feet uh, in the educational building between the hospital and the med school, so it's right in the center of the action. We can plan for almost anything in the health system. The technology is truly remarkable. They're really high fidelity clinical simulators that really allow you to get into the moment and forget that you're in an actual simulation, but to imagine that you're actually treating a patient in the hospital. Thinking as you would under pressure to get your heart rate going as it would in real life. I think the new expansion is an extraordinary addition to all the educational programs across the health system. When I go into my first real delivery, I'm going to feel so much more confident because I've been able to practice in a situation that is as close to reality as possible. I'm going to be able to give that patient really confident and quality care because of the practice I've had. My experience intubating a patient or running a sub-Q closure has been significantly easier to pick up in real life having practiced here in the simulation center. I'm so grateful that I work here and that this has been a priority of our medical school and graduate medical education to make this place happen.